Hello and welcome to Divide and Conquer Overhaul version 4 Northman slash Easterings Reformed showcasing a Mladris or the High Elves or the Noldor. Now you might be wondering why are they version 4? If, you know, if it's Northman and Easterlings, well, because version 3 was about the Elves and I didn't showcase the Elves. So, what is Imladris or the Noldor? First and foremost, the Noldor faction is the most powerful late game faction in the game. Nothing will stop a full army of the Noldor. Nothing. They have the most powerful legendary unit. They have <laughs> incredibly powerful elites. And they have the most tankiest cavalry in the game. So, let's see them actually. Well, first and foremost, you as the Noldor, as the elves in general actually, you get the highway or the great road. Increase trade, increase population growth, you get them. Once you unlock the Austin Ephil and you build the um, oh, I can show you build the, the the mine the mine the mine the blacksmith you get a lot of bonuses from your castles from your cities from your everything once you build the special blacksmith your final tier will get you Caliburnborian plate you get Caliburnborian plate from your Noldorim uh, Noldorim armor because the idea is because the Noldor, the lore basically, I'm not explain the, my head cannon, but for this is basically the Noldor are going back to the to the Gwaifi, the Gwaifi Meridine. They're learning the great smithing, and they're now applying it to everywhere. So you, these Noldoran armorers, know how to make Caliburborian plate, but they find the secrets to the basically what created the ring or some of the secrets and they can now make the superior plate the biggest the most strongest armor upgrade in the game and you can only get it from Gwaithi Meridine so that's the special thing about the, the high elves let's see what generals you have well first and foremost as you can see your militia is garbage you have very low militia but Lord Elrond or High Lord Elrond or the High King Elrond comes with the best, the best legendary unit in the game. The Noldor Eternal Legion. 21 melee attack, 13 missile attack and charge with total defense of 44. They beat the elves in armor. 26 armor, 18 defensive skill. This unit, Elrond himself, can kill, can ki and will kill, all of Moria alone. He can easily take on 2k plus armies of the goblins. Easily. He alone can defend all of this, which I advise you to yes, actually use him like that. Or if you don't want to lose him, use him like that, don't use him like that then. Let him be in the Mladris if you want to make it harder for yourself. And then we come to your second unique general, and that is Gildor Inglorian, who comes with your Noldor Archers. 15 melee attack, 11 missile attack, total defense of 30. 20 in armor, 10 defensive skill. You get armor. As the High Elves, you get armor. Don't you worry about that. And of course, Kirdan comes with the Calaquendi Nobles, not Mithlon Nobles, Calaquendi Nobles, because you get Calaquendi Nobles in Imladris, in Imladris, in uh, Tharbad, Osnathil, and if I remember correctly, a Numinous too, if you grab a Numinous, and if the, uh, the, um, the Northern Dunedain rebuilt the House of Kings, you will actually get the Calaquendi Nobles from that also. You don't get special, you know, limited units. The, the Noldor Eternal Legion you get from Imladris. You get in Mithlon, you get in Austinfield, you get in Tarbat, you get in Amon Sul. You will get in Anuminas, you will get from a lot of places. The Noldor Eternal Legion are your... Well, Legion. They cost a shit ton of money, but they're your Legion. And as you can see, 3000 upkeep. So, the High Elves are so expensive, but so good. 42 total defense. Ah, they're amazing. They are amazing. But that's not about gushing of the elves. Let's go see their units. 
and welcome to the unit showcase of the high elves as you can see much more units here and much less units here now a couple of changes i possibly plan is to make these to be good units and to make these to also be good units it's a planned change i'm thinking about do it but that's maybe for version 7 or something like that either way uh let's look at the armanier swordmasters 18 attack oh <laughs> so good 11 charge bonus, 21 total defense, 13 armor, 8 defensive skill. They have a cost of double. So yeah, wait, maybe they, no, actually no, they, they don't have a change, sorry. They don't, I didn't change their cost of upkeep. Either way, that's amazing. That That is amazing for a militia unit. Not even militia, but militia unit. Linda Bowman, 8 mil attack, 7 missile attack, 5 charge with 16 total defense, 8 armor, 8 defensive skill. Armor is your game. But there are only 92 of them. You suffer. You have no militia. You suffer in the early game. Your late game is very sad. Your early game is trash. Linder Mariners. Uh, Mar uh, Mariners, yeah. Uh, 12 mil attack, 10 missile attack, 8 charge with 18 total defense. 9 9. 9 armor, 9 defensive skill. But only 77 of them. What are this? What are 77 of them gonna do? Not much, I tell you. Not much. And then we come to your. Uh, your uh, standard guards, 10 attack, 7 charge bonus, 20 total defense, 8 armor, 8 defense skill, 4 shield. They're so good. They're very, very good. But again, it's only a hundred of them. They're not gonna survive many encounters, if any. And then we go on to Linger, uh, Linden Long Spears. 6 attack, 7 charge, with 13 total defense, 8 armor, 5 defensive skill. And again, 77 of them. Not a lot, but they will do it. They will hold the line. They will do their job. But then we come to your actual good units, which you will get them quicker than your militia, by the way. In the late game, this changes. These become very rare, while your faction focuses fully on recruiting your elites and good units. Because I'm going to talk about when I get to the Noldor units. All right. Uh, Cinder Spearman, 14 attack, 7 charge bonus, total defense of 33. 15 armor, 13 defensive skill, and 5 shield. Oh, they're good. But they have a cost of like 2,500 and like probably around 1,000 upkeep. They're expensive as fuck, but they're good. I, actually, they might, no, wait. They might have 3,000 upkeep. They, they're expensive. They're expensive as fuck. They're expensive. Cinder Axeman, 12 attack, 9 charge bonus, effective against armor, and 30 total defense. 15 armor, 10 defense skill, 5 shield. They're insane! All of these can be legendary units, and they're only good for you. Yet there can be elites for everyone else. They're insane! And then we have Cinder Archers. 12 mil attack, 9, char 9 missile attack, 7 charge, and 24 total defense. 15 armor again, 9 defensive skill. And there's 132 of them. So you get 150, 150, and then 130. For the Sindar archers. And then we come to the special changes to the lore, in my opinion, and the changes to everything else. So, in my head canon, the Noldors are kind of returning to Middle Earth. Elrond has changed his mind. Elrond decided that he wants to stay and he wants to recreate the High Kingdom for the, for the Elves. And so, he somehow called the Noldor in and they're returning in droves, which means you get your, you get your 200 elites. 200 unit size elites. No other defenders, defenders, 16 attack. They will kill. They will kill. It doesn't matter if they're spearmen, they will kill. 8 charge bonus and total defense of 39. 19 armor, 14 defensive skill, 6 shield. With cost of 6,000 and an upkeep of 3,000. They are worth every penny, every copper dime. They're worth it. Noldor veterans attack 20, charge 12, total defense 33, with 20 armor and 13 defenses. They're fucking insane. They, you, they're worth it. They again cost 6,000 gold and have 3,000 upkeep. It doesn't matter because an army, a full on army of Noldor, which is 60,000 gold in upkeep, will destroy any army it will destroy 20 more um 20 uh saurons it will destroy everything it doesn't matter and of course the special the custom uh, not custom but uh unique 
custom unique general either way. The uh, Inglorian that gets its 13 mil attack, 11 missile attack, 8 charge with 30 total defense. 20 in armor, 10 defense skill. Noldor archers can actually be your frontline units if you don't have enough uh, Noldor veterans. And again, 6,000 cost and 3,000 upkeep. But that's, you know, it's all fine and dandy. Gigantic legendary you know, gigantic elites. Let's look at the uber elites. First, Calaquendi nobles. 22 attack. Uh, 14 charge bonus and total defense of 42. 24 armor, 12 defense skill, and shield of 6. Oh, and there's 90 of them. They will kill everything. They will cost, they of course cost 6,000 and have an upkeep of 3,000. All of them are cost 6,000 and have an upkeep of 3,000. Eregan Smiths. Attack 15, charge 8, total defense 40. So they have, they have less, less defense than Kalaquendi Nobles, which showcase you that Nobles are more are special, more special than the Smiths. But still, 22 armor, 12 defense skill, 6 shield. Who, who's gonna complain? Who, who's gonna complain? No one. And here we come to your uh, Eldrinve turn now. There's a hundred of them, they have an attack of 11, which they're pikes, which means if you go times 3, that's 33 attack. 33 attack, <laughs> charge bonus of 8, and total defense of 35. 22 armor, 13 defensive skill. Um, cost 6,000, upkeep 3,000. They are insane. They're just in insane. And of course, we got to Eldarine Roquen with 14 attack, 15 charge, and total defense of 40. 22 armor, 12 defense skill, 6 shield. They are just. They're, the, they're tanks. They're, they're the most ta uh, heavily armored cavalry in the game. But then we come to your insanity. Not not the, the general. General bodyguard is not changed. This insanity. These... Uh, le just I don't know how to explain it. The Noldor Eternal Legion has melee attack of 20, missile attack of 13, and charge bonus of 10. With total armor, or total defense, sorry, of 44. They are the most heavily armored unit in the game. They make the dwarves blush, and you can upgrade them. So maybe 46 armor, total defense 46. 26 armor, 18 defensive skill. They will survive everything. There's uh, their only, your only weakness is armor piercing. But how effective is armor piercing if this 26 becomes 13? You need to have more. You need more damage, even if you have armor piercing, to actually make the, the the legion hurt. They are eternal by all means. I haven't showcased all the cavalry because I haven't changed all the cavalry. Either way, what can I say about the Noldor? The Noldor, the High Elves. They are. Oh, first of all, I have to say something. One, I'm extremely biased towards the High Elves. They're my favorite faction. If you haven't noticed by now. Um, they are a faction that if you survive the early game, and that is an if, because you will lose money. If you use Elrond, if you use uh, Kirdan, if you use um, the, the, I forgot the name of the guy, in the middle with the Noldor Archers, you will lose around, around 11,000 gold per turn. You will have no economy. But with these units, you don't need an economy. You, they are walk, they are walking Death Stars each and every one of them. If you take three of them, you go together. You can go kill uh, Mordor now. Nothing will stop you. No one can stop you. If you truly wish so. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't recommend that. I recommend two playing styles with the Noldor. One is you use Elrond, you use uh, Glindor... Glindor and Glorian? <sighs> Him. And you take over Eregion. You, you defend... Austin Hill, and you wait to rebuild it. You save your economy, or you play more cheeky. You don't expand in the east; you expand west with Kirdan, with your low militia. You take more territories. You allow the orcs, the more the Moria, to develop themselves, and then you wait. Then when the twins return, then you go on the attack, because I think that's more fair. Because your, your militia is awful. You don't you don't have a militia. I'm tempted to remove militia from the, the roster. Like, they'll be like 10 units. They'll be not worth it at all. 
but you get you know you get your elites and your good units. That makes no sense. So yeah, your militia is all about. It's a standing army just for the sake of being a standing army. It's when your Sindar and your Noldor return and start returning from Velanor, you get uh, you get your armies. You get these gigantic armies that will no no one can stop. Nothing can stop. Maybe a full squad of uh, Dunedain still bowmen, but that's like that's uh, 80,000 upkeep for the Northern Dunedain to be able to stop these guys. Armor piercing is the only thing that can stop them. And that's it. Nothing else can stop them. I hope you enjoyed the, the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, or comment. I greatly appreciate the support. Goodbye.